Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be taking a look at the Hand of Melania, uh, which I have equipped here. Uh, this is upgraded to plus 10, which is the max level for this weapon using Somber Smithing Stones, so we'll look at it from that perspective. Uh, this is a katana that you get after defeating Melania, so you get a remembrance from her and turning in that remembrance, this is one of the two options that you can choose as your reward. Um, so for this video, we'll take a look at the stats of the weapon, comparing it from base level to max level. Uh, we'll, I'll show off the moveset and the attacks, and then also demonstrate some damage output as well as just some general gameplay using the weapon as well. Starting with the stats of the weapon, I have the base level version on the left and the maxed out version on the right. Looking at attack power, you can see it's a physical only based weapon. Uh, that has 117 damage uh, at base level, and that's increased to 286 at max level. However, if you notice down at the bottom under the passive effects, it also does have a blood loss buildup damage aspect to it as well. Um, for attributes, it's uh, primarily dexterity focused weapon, so under the required attributes you can see you need fairly high dexterity at 48, as well as a little bit of strength at 16. For the scaling of those attributes, it starts out with a C for dexterity and then an E for strength. Uh, after maxing out to plus 10, that's increased to a B for dexterity, however strength uh, remains at an E. So if you look at my character status on the far right, my stats that I have built out for this weapon, um, as noted, it's a dexterity focused weapon, so I've basically just maxed out my dexterity to plus uh, or to 99, um, and then also having a little bit of strength as well as at 36. However, strength really doesn't impact this weapon a whole lot in terms of damage, I noticed as I was... Um, increasing my stats for it. So you can see with that combination, I'm getting an additional 387 damage under my physical attack power. Uh, moving on to the skill of the weapon that it comes with. So here's the item description and the skill description. So this skill is called Waterfowl Dance. And if you fought Melania, this should be um, pretty recognizable to you. It's that kind of whirlwind attack that she does. Um, so it's basically a, a copy of that. And uh, we'll take a look at more uh, like a demonstration of that in the next part of the video. Okay, now looking at the various moves and attacks for the weapon, uh, both single-handed and two-handed. So starting off in single-handed, we'll do a regular attack combo, which is a five hit there. And then the heavy attack, which is two. Uh, we'll do a charged heavy attack. And then we'll do a rolling regular attack. Rolling heavy attack, backstep regular attack, backstep heavy attack, and then we'll do a sprinting regular attack, a sprinting heavy attack, and then here is a jump heavy attack. Okay, moving to two handed, here is the regular attack combo. Here is the heavy attack, the charged heavy attack, the roll regular attack, roll heavy attack, backstep regular attack, and backstep heavy attack, and then here's a jump heavy attack. Okay, now looking at the skill Waterfowl Dance. Um, this is one of those skills that has multiple stages to it. So if you keep pressing the skill button, you're going to be doing like the next phase of it. So there are three different segments for this skill. Um, each one costs 7 FP. So that's 21 FP if you go through the full sequence. And if you keep an eye on my um, FP meter, you can kind of see me go through each stage. So um, here's the first one. And then if we kind of keep using the skill, here's the second stage. And then here's the third. So that was all three stages. If you just like tap the button and let go, it's just that. So um, you can kind of choose to go through the whole sequence or just use the, the first one. Looking at some damage output of the weapon, I'll go through some attacks in both single-handed and two-handed. Um, I don't have any talismans or anything equipped currently, so this will be kind of a base example. Uh, starting off will be in single-handed. I'll do a regular attack combo. Uh, this weapon does have blood loss, so keep an eye out. You'll probably see a, a 
bigger hit that's the blood loss hit. So uh, we'll start off here. So there's that blood loss hit. So that was 40, 36. Now moving to a heavy attack. We'll do a heavy attack combo. So that was 968. Uh, we'll do a charged heavy attack. That's 625 and then a jump attack 505. Switching to two-handed, we'll do a regular attack combo. There's a blood loss hit there. 41-22. Now a heavy attack combo. That's 10-20. A charged heavy attack. 650. And a jump heavy attack. 531. And then looking at the skill waterfowl dance, we'll go through that sequence. See what the damage looks like there. So there was five, five, two, five with the, looked like we got a blood hit in there as well. The skill also has a little bit of an area of effect aspect to it as well. So I'll demonstrate that here with this group of enemies. Uh, obviously I'm gonna be a little over leveled for this area, but um, just kind of showing off that you can use it to effectively take out a group of enemies as well. Before we get into some gameplay, I thought I'd cover some of the talismans that I've been using to help increase the damage output of this weapon. So, uh, looking at what we've got here, the first is the Shard of Alexander. So this is going to increase the damage of the Waterfowl Dance attack, so this greatly boosts the attack power of skills. The next is Lord of Blood's Exaltation, so this is uh, playing off that blood damage that the weapon does, where you can see blood loss in the vicinity increases attack power. The next is the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, so this increases the attack power with successive attacks, so not only just regular attacks, but this will also help the Waterfowl Dance as well. And then finally, just kind of a generic attack power increase with the Ritual Sword Talisman, which raises when your health is at maximum. So, if you remember when we did the Waterfowl Dance demonstration on this guy, we did um, 5,525 damage with no talismans. So now we'll take a look at the impact with these four talismans uh, active. So you can see now that's been increased to 7,113. Another item that you could try incorporating into a build for this weapon is the White Mask, which is part of the War Surgeon uh, armor set. Um, unfortunately, I can't get it anymore. Uh, I've kind of been locked out of getting that item in this playthrough, but that mask will increase your attack power by 10% when blood loss is in the vicinity, um, kind of similar to this uh, Lords of Blood Exaltation Talisman. Um, so you could try incorporating that as well.
So that was a look at the Hand of Melania at max level, which is plus 10 using somber smithing stones. This is honestly kind of my first experience uh, using katanas in this game. I've primarily stuck to great swords and axes and things like that. So I can't do a great comparison to the other katanas that are in this game. Uh, but I will say my experience with this weapon in particular, uh, it definitely felt pretty powerful and viable for end game content for sure. Um, I, I did feel like I kind of was gravitate, like I wanted to go back to using my swords and my axes again. Um, I think just kind of personal preference, I just enjoy using those weapons more. But if you do enjoy the katanas, I think this is something you would definitely enjoy as well, probably. Uh, the waterfowl dance is certainly a pretty powerful attack. You do have to kind of pick and choose when you use it, though. Uh, trying to go through that full sequence does take quite a bit of time. And it's pretty common that you'll get hit and knocked over while trying to go through that full sequence. So it is kind of limited in that capacity. But if you are able to find those windows when you can take advantage of the full sequence, it does put out quite a bit of damage, uh, particularly if you use talismans kind of like I did to enhance that. Um, so overall, I mean, personally, I, I don't think this is something I would use long term. Uh, again, I just personal preference, enjoy the, the big swords and things like that. Uh, but again, if you're somebody that enjoys katanas, I think this is definitely something worth uh, checking out and trying out and potentially maxing out if you, if you like it. So uh, we'll leave it there. Uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you later.